The other day, as I was thinking and praying, I was imagining my life like a pipeline. You know, a pipeline, if you put in water in one side, obviously water is going to come out the other side. But with the lifeline of my life, it has not always been obvious to me that input becomes output. See, when I was a younger Christian, I would live the Christian walk, but I'd also do things that were not ethical. They were not right before men, and definitely not right before God. But I kind of thought that I could live for God and put a little bit of perversion in, and then I imagined myself walking to the other end of the pipeline and watching good Christian ethics come out. It didn't work out for me. Whenever I messed up, it always came around to bite me. I remember a point of my life just cringing when someone was ready to confront me because I didn't even know what they're going to confront me of. But I saw my life as this pipeline because I just imagined myself putting in so many things into that pipeline, walking to the other side, and just waiting to see what would come out and dreading it. The same is true if we repent of our sins and then start really living for Jesus and doing the works of righteousness. We will do so many things in our day and in our week and in our year. We can't possibly remember all the things that we did. But if we're a good example to others, if we live righteously and live holy, if we're having good conversations with people led by the Holy Spirit, We won't remember every single one of those, but later people will come back and they will thank us. Or one day when we stand before God, he will say, good and well done, my my faithful servant. And he will remind us of those things that we did for him. Whatever you put in, that will also come out. What you reap is what you earlier sowed. I want to read to you what Jesus said about this in Matthew Chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory, and all the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate them one from another, as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats. And he will set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. I was naked, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you drink? And when did we see you a stranger and take you in, or naked and clothe you? Or when did we see you sick or in prison and come to you? And the king will answer and say to them, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did it to one of the least of these of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will also say to those... On the left hand, depart from me, you cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. I was a stranger, and you did not take me in. Naked, and you did not clothe me. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they will answer him, saying, Lord, when did we see you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not minister to you. Then he will answer them, saying, Assuredly, I say to you, inasmuch as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into everlasting punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Whatever we reap will also sow. And we will not remember everything that we did. But Jesus remembers every single word and every single action. We will reap whatever we sowed. Are you sowing corruption and wickedness and perversion, even though you call yourself a Christian? Or are you really sowing what is righteous and pure and holy? 
Are you living for Jesus Christ with all of your heart? And are your actions and words truly pleasing to him? May the grace of Jesus be with you.